Today, we are starting in on a project that we have been dreaming about for a long time, and it is gonna change the way that we live up here in the woods in our cabin, especially in the winter. And I'm really excited to show you what we have planned. So I'm gonna load up and we're gonna head out and start the project. And after last winter, it's become a little bit of a safety issue because we can't afford to be without power for multiple days at a time. So having a backup system that allows us to continue to use our well pump and power most of the circuits in the house without having to connect them all individually to a generator is gonna be a complete game changer. And now after living up at our property for almost two years now and having electricity to our property for almost seven, we're finally taking our property off grid, but not in the way you might think. And it's not gonna be as complicated as you think either. I drove all the way down here with all of the gear and we're down here by our main service panel. And you can see our transformer is right here. Main service panel is here. And really the only thing we have connected to this panel is this 30 amp RV plug. Um, and then there's also a circuit that goes to our pump house right here that pump that powers the, our well pump and a few other circuits, just a light and an outlet. So I'll take you inside the panel real quick. You can see that we have our well sub panel here and then our uh, RV plug here. And then this was just an accessory outlet. So the plan is to move this sub panel breaker down to this spot, remove both of these breakers, and then we'll put our interlock breaker in this spot. And then anything we wanna do after that, we'll have to tie into our sub panel on the pump house. So I'm gonna get this panel turned off and get the front panel removed and we'll start removing that box, get our generator box replaced and the interlock kit installed. And then we'll be on to the fun part, which is installing the actual electronics and components, which is really what I'm excited about. Okay, power's going off to the whole system. And one more screw down here. I am not an electrician, but I have worked on this panel and our other panels, done all of our wiring. So this is just my experience. But when you're working on your main panel, you do want to be extremely careful because even when you have this breaker turned off, it disconnects everything from the breaker down. So if I use my non-contact tester here, I'm not going to get any, any voltage on any of this stuff. But if I go up here, these are still live. So even when you have all your power turned off, unless we took this meter out, these are still live points and there's no way to turn that off without contacting your PUD. So as long as you stay kind of vigilant and you're only working in this quadrant down here, you're relatively safe. You, but anytime you're working about around any live circuits, you do want to be extremely careful. So now that we're inside the panel here, we have this 50 amp breaker and I'm going to move that down to this location, take both these breakers out. And then we have a new 50 amp breaker that's going to go in this spot. So I'm going to disconnect all the wires from both these breakers since they won't be used any longer. Out. 
so now that we have the breakers disconnected from the panel, I'm going to remove this RV box so we can make way for our generator inlet box. Got some creepy crawlies living in there. All right, now that we have the box removed, we're able to mount the generator interlock box. I got that box out of there, but unfortunately the conduit that I used was half inch. And since I'm running a 50 amp box, I needed to upgrade the conduit to three quarters inch instead of the half inch that was already there. So I went and grabbed some supplies and I'm gonna get that conduit ran so I can mount the box right here. I'm missing a couple of pieces of conduit, a terminal adapter and an LB box for that three quarter inch conduit to make it all work. So I'm gonna change gears a little bit and get the generator interlock kit all installed and mounted. And then I'll just take a quick trip to the store and get those couple pieces I needed. Then we'll have the panel all completely done and we can move on to the fun part of installing the components. All right, I have a little bit of an irregular panel. So I had to order my interlock kit off of uh, geninterlock.com. Um, they were good to work with and they sent me the product really fast. The distance between, I don't know if you can see, the distance between my main up here and the first breaker is pretty far and most of the interlock kits only account for like one and a half or two inches. I'm not sure why that one has such a big gap but I definitely had to source a specialty interlock to get it going. So I'm gonna go and kind of read the instructions on here real quick and then get it installed. So that would be make it so that could turn on or couldn't turn on. Okay, we just got that interlock kit installed. So now the panel is all ready and now we just need to install the generator input box. And so I'm going to run that from the box. We're gonna do a six gauge wire on a 50 amp breaker. Just run it right through here and mount it right where that RV box used to be. So I've ran the conduit from the panel up to here. I put this little blocking piece of wood so that I have room for my conduit to come straight up into my box. So next I'm gonna pull the wire from the panel through this, through here, and then right up into the box. All right, I'll have all my wires now ran out here. Just need to add the conduit and the generator input will be all finished. And then time to play with some components.
I just finished putting the last screw into our input box here. Now, just going to connect the wires into the panel and we'll be all done. The generator input box is all wired up on this side and it's all wired up into the panel. So now it's time to go get the batteries and plug them in and test the system out. All right, so you probably have figured out by now that we chose the EcoFlow Delta Pros for our whole home backup system. And the cool thing about this system is that each one of these units can produce 120 volts of power, but using EcoFlow's dual voltage combiner, we can, we can plug each one of the units into here and then this gives us 240 volts that you, we can plug directly into our generator box that you just saw me install. So with both these units combined, that gives us 7,200 watts of power at 240 volts. And that gives us just over 21 kilowatt hours of power. So plenty enough for us to run our well, to take showers and run our lights, We'll probably refrain from using our electric heaters or anything that draws a lot of power. But thankfully we have our dryer on propane, our range is going to be on propane, and our other and we have our wood stove for heating. So really we should be able to run for at least a couple of days without even recharging these things. So I'm excited to get these plugged in and see what they can do and test out the system. All right, so I'm going to take EcoFlow's double voltage hub and connect it to both of the units right now. All right, so there's the little hatch on the sides here. There's where the double voltage hub connects to. I'm gonna connect both those guys in. After we have the two infinity ports plugged in, there's a little button on the top of the dual voltage combiner right here. So we'll click that on and then let's use our multimeter and see what kind of voltage we're getting. All right, we're getting 240 volts out of the hub. Uh, let's get it plugged into the generator input box over at the panel and turn things on and see how it works. I ended up buying this 25 foot 30 amp cable. Now we did install a 50 amp plug, so I had to get an adapter on that input. But the reason was is uh, at some point I may want to add a different generator uh, that can supply 50 amps. I, I didn't want to limit the system right now uh, and have to go through and reinstall all, a new box. So I figured I'd put the new box in, get an adapter, and then we can upgrade later if we need to. All right, and here's that adapter that I got that would, that'll go from our 50 amp uh, generator input box and make it go down so I can plug in this 30 amp cord. This will be able to plug right into here. And then we'll go plug this into the box. All right, now we'll go get the end of this cord plugged into the EcoFlows. I had to move the EcoFlows a little bit closer to the pump house because it looks like maybe I'll need a 30 foot cord instead of the 25. But I got these all set up over here now, got the dual voltage hub connected. I'm gonna go ahead and turn, turn it on now and you can see both units kind of come to life when I do that. All right, so now I'm gonna plug in the cord to the 
box. Now all we should have to do is go over to the panel and turn it on and we should be powering our house. I'm seeing a green light on the on our hub. Let's go check the units and see see what's going on. Definitely see some activity here. We've got 1500 watts going on the one unit and only 78 watts going on the other unit. I'm gonna go up and kind of check out what is running up at the house now. All right, as I'm coming up to the house, I can hear the ERV running. We got our outside lights that are on. I peeked inside the trailer real quick and our coffee maker was running and I'm sure that takes probably 1500 watts just by itself. Yeah, we got all of our lights working. Yeah. Well, I have went and checked out everything and I had left the compressor on and I had left the coffee maker on, like two pretty high voltage items and it didn't have any problem and actually it looked like only most of the voltage was on one of the single units because as you saw from the video there was one of the units that was getting like 1500 watts and one of the units that was only getting like 100 watts so our, our legs were a little bit unbalanced i'm pretty pretty darn impressed and the ease of being able to set everything up, just be able to plug and play. Now, probably what I'll do in the future is get some solar panels so I can connect to the unit so they can be charging during the day. And we could maybe use this as, you know, every, every couple of days, we could let it charge up and just run our house off of the, off of the sun. All right, let's take a look. I took, turned off the coffee maker yeah, so now, now we're only at 720 watts on that one and 114 on that one. It's pretty cool, it gives you the uh, percentage that you're gonna have left in the battery and an approximate number of uh, hours or days that you have left on your charge. All right, you just saw me install that whole system and it took me about four hours today to get done. And that was including in putting in the generator interlock kit, installing the box and getting both of the EcoFlows connected, running, testing everything. I'm really excited about this product and looking forward to adding on to my system with additional batteries and solar panels to just kind of expand it out. So honestly, I didn't think that a whole house backup system could be this easy to install or use, but no matter if you're gonna use it for a backup system or you're gonna use it while you're traveling or recreating or outdoors, the EcoFlow Delta Pros are a handy and eco-friendly option for your family to use anytime. Check out the link in our description, or you can see the link right on the screen here, but you can visit EcoFlow's landing page and it'll tell you all about their whole home backup systems. We wanna thank EcoFlow for sponsoring this episode and we really looking forward to using this in the future and if you have any questions for me on the install or how we're liking it we're going to do a follow-up on this and kind of let you know how the system is going and but let us know in the in, in the meantime if you have any questions for us thanks for watching and again we really appreciate you guys uh, listening to these messages and these sponsors. Sponsors help us create a lot of the content that you watch in our normal vlog videos and uh, we really appreciate the the help and support of the sponsors like EcoFlow for making us making it making it possible to produce the normal episodes that you watch every week. So thanks again EcoFlow and thank you all for watching.